Hi, my name is Nick. I'm with Baca Systems and welcome to this edition of our virtual fabrication seminar talking about water systems. Uh, Baca Systems is uh, located in Lake Orion, Michigan, uh, where we strive to provide a solution for every fabricator from robotic saw jets to CNC routers, five axis saws, mitering machines, and the Baca Pure water system. Uh, today, uh, I'm lucky enough to have the president of uh, EBCO here with us uh, to speak Hi, about the Hi, I'm Yeah, Eddie, tell us about yourself. Sorry, uh, I'm Ed Tarakian with EBCO Incorporated. Uh, EBCO has been in the metalworking filtration business since 1983. Um, we entered into the basic process you know, metalworking, coolant, and got into EDM, which really put us on the map and probably uh, gave us our first opportunity for brick and mortar. And from there, we got back into the uh, grinding and conventional, you know, metalworking, then very heavily into the water jet, which kind of led us into the uh, stoneworking. Um, if you take a look on the upper right, that huge dumbbell, uh, is actually a huge water jet, uh, uh, like a 20 by 40 conventional water jet table. That dumbbell does the garnet removal process just for that huge water jet table. To the left, we have uh, basically a system that went to a medical facility where they're doing some real fine grinding, and it actually has centrifugal separators on it that is basically the heartbeat of our pure system. Uh, it has a polishing filters that are actually uh, 5 and 10 micron. And if you look on the far end of it, there's a chiller. So this thing is all contained and it actually does medical stainless steel. Below that, you'll see a grinding system for a large 100 inch diameter uh, Blanchard grinder. And basically Blanchard grinders are precision machines that uh, magnetically hold a part in place and they'll basically nest, you know, they could put a hundred bearing plates on there and they grind them all at once and it makes a huge amount of sludge. If you see that little yellow deflector plate on the side, that's a drag flight that actually drags the real heavy solids out. And then we again polish it down with the centrifugal separator. So we have literally been applying centrifugal separators to applications since the early 80s. And that's where we cut our teeth. And what EBCO did to evolve in the filtration business is tried to use the like products for applications where it made sense and applied. And that's why the stone uh, filtration system was very basic to what we've been doing all these years. And we understand staging filtration. Sometimes there's a little bit more, a little bit less that's needed to be done. And we basically zero in on that. So you'll find that our filtration systems are not just a filter. They are comprised of a lot of individual filters. Yeah, so a complete system, right? It's not just a buying of a unit. It's actually addressing the needs of the fabrication plant. Uh, right. So, you know, we start, uh, you know, as we talk to our customers about uh, what machines they have, how much stone are they cutting, so we can really get a handle on sizing the Baca Pure system appropriately to our customers. And so a lot of times when we, you know, really get started, um, you know, the understanding of a filter system inside of the stone industry, uh, you know, is very... Um, gray and, and I, don't, I don't mean to say it like that but uh there's there's not a lot of commonality between them and so you know what we see is the different types of water systems there's basically three basic types right <laughs> we see the settling tank system and really uh, the settling tank system is something that you see in a beginner shop they're just getting started they're looking for a way to recycle the water and basically you know as you can see there it's a it's a series of tanks in the floor that they're just dumping from one to the other to the other and they're just peeling the water off of the top trying to allow the uh heavy solids to settle um so and if it's i may expensive yeah go ahead i'm sorry i didn't mean to interrupt but one one thing that you know settling is a great form of filtration if you have time the problem is is there's too much going on and now shops are just moving too fast to even think of it 
and it's very cumbersome and takes a lot of room. I didn't want to interrupt it. Uh, the, the problem is, is you just don't have time to wait for things to settle. It's just not going to happen. Yeah. And usually, you know, that's that's where I was going is usually what we find is, you know, they're they're extremely inexpensive to do. And so, you know, a customer starting a shop that's on a, a really tight budget, that's how they begin. And uh, and it's slow to create that gray water and you have to clean the pits really, uh, you know, often. And um, and at the end of the day, you're still getting very dirty water that, you know, you can't polish with or is tough on machines. And so rapidly we see customers then go and spend money on a water system and they really then begin with like this gray water system and so we'll get into it in a minute but uh we have what's called the hydro 80 um which is a, a nice gray water system from from ebco uh which uses a coagulant and helps uh, accelerate the settling process um and is more ideal for cutting water or rinsing slabs uh, but you know, not ideal for running through spindles on routers or through saw jets or um, or CNC saws, and not ideal for for polishing. Um, so at that point, then as a customer's business continues to keep uh, you know growing, they then go to a clean water system, which you know most people know as a filter press in our business. And so it's more of uh, it, it's more taking all of that gray water, running it through a filter press and creating clean water behind it. Um, and so, you know, we take or EBCO takes a, a different approach to that. It's not a filter press. Uh, and there's a lot of advantages of this plant wide filtration that uh, that EBCO is doing uh, that that provides gray water to where you need gray water and provides clean water that's suitable for polishing and suitable for machines where you need the clean water and uh, which creates a lot of advantages um, to you know how much water you're actually filtering how often you're going through the the filters uh, you know the downtime the maintenance uh, a, a lot of those things that we're going to get into as we continue to keep going so if, um, I, if I may real quick Nick just just as a quick um, when we run the hydro 80 system, the Hydro 80 system runs continuously, will continuously all throughout the day, uninterrupted, will give you gray water to every area of your shop at the prescribed pressure of 75 PSI. And as needed, you can add clear water to the entire shop at the rate of 80 gallons a minute if you desire. And as Nick will get into, it's much, much more affordable and you can grow into the system as you needed uh 10 to 20 gallons a minute at a time yeah which really which really speaks to me uh eddie because you know so often we talk about a, a customer growing with their robot right you can buy a single table robot and then grow to that dual table robot um you know the ability to be able to buy a gray water system and then grow to that clear water really ultimately helps you in your total capital of equipment investment over time. So, um, you know, with that being said, like gray water, clean water, clear water, it, it all gets confused in this industry. And so, you know, we really like to talk about well, how clean is really clean. Um, and so, you know, gray water is, uh, again, it's, it's a coagulant, uh, that you're putting into a tank to help draw the solids down, you're really more like 10 microns, right? It's not going yep. through any filter. Um, and and, and, it, and, and depending on how much clear we put to the uh, process, your gray water will exponentially get cleaner and cleaner. So the more crystal clear you polish down, the cleaner your gray is. We've actually had gray water in the five micron area because we're taking so much out with the crystal clear and it always helps. Yeah. I, uh, and, and we'll get into it later, but one of the things I absolutely love about the Baca Pure is uh, that you can continue to keep that system running and it will continue to keep filtering. Even your pit will continue to keep getting filtered as you go. Um, so it's it's huge. Um, and then you, you talk about clear water. Clear water is really like one micron. Um, it's great for polishing. It's it's really you know good for the machines. Um, Spindles. So, Bindles, um, you know, a lot of that stuff is, it's fantastic for it. Um, so 
We'll talk about it. it looks like it skipped a slide on me. Um, we'll talk about the, the, the gray water system to begin with because uh, it's really where everybody starts when they're buying a, a system is this Hydro 80 gray water system. And so, uh, Eddie, I'll let you go ahead and explain the, uh, the Hydro 80. Okay. So, so basically, like I had mentioned, um, we pride ourselves in building complete filtration systems that are user friendly and very low maintenance and just keep running. So you're basically, when we start out the system, we go through the floor trench and we'll show you a little bit later. The first line of defense is we have a lobster pot that is basically a flume screen that keeps, everybody knows you get chunks of polishing discs, you get caps off of five gallon pails, you get chunks of stone that are, you know, three eighths of an inch to a quarter inch, uh, large, large pieces that could affect pumps and whatnot. So the first thing we do is we strain out all the contaminant that could harm the pump and give you pump failure. We use a very robust heavy duty pump. Our pump is um, 1750 RPM. It runs at half speed. And by running at half speed, you literally will uh, double the life of the operation. We run at low speed, so you're not swinging the guts out of the motor. The motors last for years. The pumps last for years. Then we enter the hydrocyclones, which continuously uh, filter the down to the 10 micron. We go back to our gray water tank, and our tank is set up in such a way, it's actually an engineered tank. The water goes into the tank, and it is directed through, and it actually works like a clarifier. It kind of works like one of our competition's only part of the filtration. It settles out the fluff into the bottom, and we actually have a manual valve on your system where you manually purge it into your hopper. Now, along with everything like Nick says, we can upgrade it to the Baca Clear where we can sweep your pit, which is an added feature. And we can also add a um, automatic blowdown so you don't have to think about it. But you can do these steps, you know, several thousand dollars at a time and it doesn't take you know, hit your bankroll. So if you're just starting out, a lot of guys say, you know, all I have is a saw and a polisher. I'm thinking about a CNC. This is a perfect system for that. And again, 80 gallons a minute is a pretty good size shop when the whole thing is said and done. Yeah, it's a, it's a fantastic system. We've got a number of our customers that are using them now today. And, um, you know, I, I, will say as well what we have seen is we've seen people actually who have the filter presses will purchase this and put it in front of their filter press as well right and so it's a quick pre-filter before you get to a filter press um so but but really the, the system's designed to you know be for a startup shop um and then when you're ready to grow uh you can then add the other components to the system uh, or you can purchase this clear water system for your needs and, and can be scalable, you know, anywhere from 80 gallons a minute to 320 gallons a minute um, systems. Um, and so this is really your, your clear water filtration system. And uh, I'll let you explain the, the differences that you're seeing uh, from the Hydro 80 to this clear water system, Eddie. So I'll let you go. Okay, so basically, like we said, you know, one of the things that our competition does not even think about is sweeping the pit in the floor. You know, uh, the whole idea with that is with their their pump, in many cases, they put it, you know, a couple of feet off the bottom so they don't suck the mud off the bottom, and that's something less that they have to deal with. We literally, with the Baca Clear, we put a sweeper into the bottom of the pit and we agitate everything in the pit to keep it moving. And we ultimately want to remove that to, you know, you're never going to say, I'm never going to go in and shovel that pit out, but we're going to drastically re reduce the amount of service time. Um, if And when we go to the centrifugal separator, it gives us some additional uh, water. If we want to run and put water into the flumes, we can do that. Uh, there's some areas where some guys will actually use what we call the brown water from there for just flushing. You know, you don't need it. That's where, if you saw in our uh, picture of the different liquids, how clean is clean? How clean do you need it? One of the things our system does that the pure water systems don't do, like the filter press, is we continuously make the water. We are continuously making whatever the prescribed rate is. If it's an 80, a 120, a 200, 
100% uh, of the time, we are making that quantity, 80, 120, 200 gallons a minute of gray water throughout your entire shop at 75 PSI, guaranteed 100% of the time, 100% of the day, you will never be down to change filters on this system. Uh, when we go to the added crystal clear water that you see the little system there with the stainless steel canisters to the right, we add that as needed point of use for several thousand dollars. It's not, you know, my competition, our competition for 30 gallons a minute, look it up, ask them for 30 gallons a minute worth of crystal clear water, they will tell you $40,000 just for that crystal clear water. We give you 20 gallons a minute for, I think it's $9,000, eight or nine grand. So it's upgradable. You'll, and all of our crystal clear water systems are redundant with backup. So literally, and you'll see at the end of our presentation, uh, point of use at a customer, simply swip, uh, I'm sorry, simply just uh, flip a valve and you are on to the next set. So you are never, ever going to be down to clean filters, which has been a nightmare in many cases with some of our competition. Yeah, it's a, a huge advantage to be able to just throw that ball valve and keep yourself running and then go fil clean the filters on your own time. Um, it, it's huge. Uh, real quick, we had a question come in, Eddie. Um, the, the coagulant, um, is that a biodegradable coagulant or? Yeah, what happens with the coagulant, what we use, uh, it pretty much keeps the pH neutral and it tramps out with the solids. So it is uh, user friendly and it goes out with the sludge. It has a half life. So it's not like you're going to accumulate, you know, a drum of this coagulant into the bottom of the uh, filtration system. The coagulant leaches out with the solids as you change your hopper bags and, you know, change your filters, it goes. Was that clear? Are we, are we still on? Yeah. Hey, Eddie, will you please explain the, uh, the, the system here on, and, and so the total reason why people are buying this water system? Okay. So this particular one, if you look that, if you take a look at how many of those black cones are to the right, the hydrocyclones, this one here, anything we do that's in excess of 200 gallons a minute. So this is a large, large shop, 200 gallons a minute gray water with a uh, 2,600 gallon holding tank. If you notice, there are two um, sludge hoppers. One hopper is simply for the centrifugal separator. The other hopper is for the hydrocyclones. And then there's, an, a, there's a hopper that the automatic purge of the system purges into. So this unit is actually working at 200 gallons a minute. Where, uh, and that's your gray water delivery. The actual filtration of the large dumbbell, like we showed earlier, the, that 4,500 gallon a minute one, this one actually is 450 gallons a minute. So we're filtering at 450 gallons a minute with a large centrifugal pump, and we're delivering 100% of the time 200 gallons a minute at the 75 PSI. It is consistent across the shop. We put in a little flow controller at each drop into your, whether you're a CNC router or a saw or a line polisher, everything is totally dialed in so your pressure maintains and your pump stays on the curve and you run with very very low maintenance and you pump a couple of shots of grease in the thing every six months and go about your business awesome okay and so this is kind of that sequence of operations right yeah and and one of the things remember we spread this way out so we can make it uh easily visible and understandable. This whole thing fits in like a, a 10 by 20 footprint. We've spread this way out just so you can see what's going on. And you can see there, um, number one, this is of course your flume in your shop. 
And, you know, don't be afraid when you're setting up a new shop to put those flumes behind the machine so your fork trucks aren't driving around on them. You know, one of your long term uh, expenses in your shop are fork truck tires. And if you can avoid driving over those grates, uh, it's a plus on the fork truck and it's a plus on the grate. So so we enter the pit and you can see the yellow item that's our lot we call it a lobster pot it's basically looks like something you catch lobsters in but it's got a, a 5 16 uh very small perf in it this is designed to the, there you see it in the in the pit there this is designed to capture i can't tell you how many times we we find the little caps to the five gallon pails of your polish uh, pieces of polishing discs pieces of uh, broken off wheels, pieces of granite that are larger. They're, they're, uh, they'll float through the system, but they're, they're, they're small enough to get through, but big enough to disturb that pump. That pump doesn't want to see anything much bigger than three-eighths of an inch. And if you allowed it to, the damn thing could pump a softball. And we certainly don't want to go there. We have uh, screening on it to avoid that. But those pumps are very robust and they're serious. Don't get your hand in the way unless you're in a wetsuit, I don't think you'd be able to do that anyway. If you look to the right, now this on our clear system, the sweeper is 100% used. It's upgradable in our hydro system, but that little sweeper actually sweeps the bottom of that tank continuously because we want to agitate the tank and we want to get everything. We want to take 100% of the swarf that you're generating and put it in to those uh, hopper bags and get it out of there. Our competition just basically turns their head and says, well, if it stays in the pit, it's we don't have to filter it. That's not the way we look at it because we wanna come back and look you in the face and say, hey, we hope you like our system. This is what we told you it would do. That pump is a serious piece of equipment. One of the things that we know, any of you people that are involved in the water jet industry uh, realize that that water jet is designed to just decimate material, whether it's steel, cast iron, chicken, uh, granite, it cuts anything you put in front of it. Well, it is tough on the equipment. This is why we had to come up with a pump that we could give a 12 month warranty in the water jet industry. So if it will work on that garnet 100% of the time and just remove that garnet, the stone is nothing compared to just removing the garnet. So it's much, much friendlier on that pump and that pump lasts for years. It is not a pump you're gonna go out and replace. So basically, like we said, uh, well. Sorry, my, uh, my hand okay. hit the mouse there, Eddie. So I, yeah. I jumped I on think you. you. So we go, from the, we go from the pit, right? So right. Once now we wanna go up, show that dry sludge. I wanna show that. <clears throat> yeah, yes. filtered going so in. Let, goes me just, through the... let, me, let me recap here real quick, Eddie. So, so it comes down the trench. It hits the lobster pot. It's that's the first line of defense. Drops yep, in right there. Pit sweeper keeps everything keeps everything moving. It, it's suspension. got a filter on the bottom of the pump, sucks it up, and then sends it into this cyclone filtration system, right? Right. The first thing it does, it goes through the dumbbell, which is the Laco separator, which is a centrifugal separator. It all works just on a pressure drop. There's no moving parts. There's nothing you have to replace. You can see the internals. What happens is you enter where the arrow is tangentially. It spins. It accelerates. There's an acceleration chamber with all those holes in it. And what happens, it slings all the solids to the outside. Now, the reason we cock the unit to the side because it allows the separator, it allows the solids to fall out of there uh, using gravity. And then we run it down. And actually, this diagram is just the separator itself showing on a 90. We actually put the discharge port on the bottom. The mud falls right to the bottom. And we open and close an automatic valve every minute to blow that thing down into your hopper bag. Then directly from the separator, we go to the hydrocyclones, which work at 20 gallons a minute a piece. So if you ever want to know how much gray water you're sending to your process, just count these cones and 20, 40, 60. This is a 60. We just lost one on our 80. But this is three times 20 is 60 gallons a minute. And that's what would be going to the process 100% of the time at 75 PSI, period. Now you can see in, in, I mean, if you're in Arizona, this happens overnight, 
If you're in Michigan in August, it takes a couple of days. If you're in Florida, it takes a few days. But basically, we give you a solid 4,000 pound rock in that one cubic yard hopper. All you do is pull that out from under the unit, grab it with your crane or your fork truck. There's four straps on that duffel bag. The thing comes out, you set it down, you got a rock, let it dry out, and you put it right into landfill. This is our wizard uh, coagulant pump. This little guy uses, it basically has a dilution factor of 30 to one. You dump a gallon of your uh, coagulant into that. The metering pump, it's a peristolic metering pump. It uh, continuously meters into the stream that goes back to the conical tank. And that probably lasts about a week and a half that dilution. And like I said, the coagulant is environmentally user-friendly. It won't affect the stainless, it won't affect the parts. And it has a half-life and it tramps out with the solids. So it goes away. You don't build it up in the bottom of the tank or the pit or the, or your uh, gray water tank. This uh, is your Depending on the system, on your Hydro 80, it's, an, it's a 1,500-gallon tank. It goes up to a 2,600-gallon tank on our larger systems. The yellow valve that you see here, this is like a $3,500 option. This takes your mind off it. You don't have to think. And periodically, four or five times a day on a busy, heavy shop, heavy-duty uh, guys that are really cutting a heavy load, this thing will automatically blow the fluff down out of that tank into a separate hopper periodically throughout the day, you don't think about it and you just throw the bag away. Same scenario. Now our pumps, I, I, can't, I can't be more emphatic about how we size our pumps. If you remember uh, earlier on when I was showing you some of the grinding and, and um, water jet are very, very aggressive. Grinding is very aggressive uh, um, substrate. So when we select pumps, this pump has a silicon carbide, silicon carbide Viton seal in it. That seal costs as much as those uh, sump pumps that you throw away every six months on some of our competitor system that sit in the bottom of the tank. This pump is robust. The thing lasts again for years. If you look at the, the gauge, if you follow that gauge right down, we as I said, we are in the system business. You know, if you opened up some of those large cabinets I showed you, you would find huge thousands and thousands of dollars alone just for the pumps. They're variable frequency drive pumps. We run them so they are properly sized. So the pressure, you know, there might be uh, $10,000, grinders on the end of that system. And I guarantee you, I'm not going to be there when my customer loses flow to one of those things. So that's why we have these things sized properly. We want you to be happy and we want these things to last a long time. Long story short, that nipple going straight down is enough water to, for that pump to dump. If I shut that big valve off on the top of that outlet, that pump would not burn itself out because I'm gonna give it enough flow. We have to make it idiot proof. I'm sorry. So that's what we try to do. No, yeah, I mean, I think, uh, you know, you say that, uh, Eddie, but Honestly, at the end of the day, um, I think nine out of ten fabricators would agree that once they turn on their water system during the day, they don't want to. They want to forget it. about it. They want to forget about it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, so we've got we've got all this gray water, right? And now we're going to send it out, and there's some places that we need some clean water. So basically, what we've done is these are the EBCO patented hurricane vessel. It's an upflow design. It's a very safe vessel. It self bleeds itself. So you don't have to worry about a bomb in your shop. You know, these things run uh, and we can run that thing is actually designed for 100 PSI. Um, again, that pump that we just showed you, that thing puts out a little bit over 80 PSI. And the reason that we go with the 75 PSI is in order to give you the adequate filter life that you need out of the system, a lot of your CNCs are going to shut down if you have less than 45 or 50 PSI. So our filter needs that 20 to 30 pound buffer to be able to give you the proper filter life. So basically, we run the flow to this unit. Everything is redundant. You got two sets of filters to the left, two sets of filters to the right. There's a yellow three-way valve in the middle and you simply run this thing, 
the that light on the top will start flashing and it'll say hey come and look at this gauge we might be close to changing these filters so your guy will get comfortable with it he may say you know what i got another half hour i could do two more slabs you know he'll he'll get the feel of it eventually and then all he has to do is flip that valve to the right or to the left and he'll start the next bank of filters and one of the things we'll tell you now i'm going to get on my soapbox and say you're never going to be down to change filters if you pay attention and pull those two cartridges out put two backup filters in there set the thing back up now you're ready to run redundant again so you got to work with us you got to follow the instructions as long as you have that thing set up you are not going to run out of crystal clear water ever you're always going to have your 75 psi down to the 50 that's needed for your cncs and you will have pressure across the entire shop and you can add those Yay. up until if you like if you have a 80 gallon a minute system if you want to run 80 gallons a minute crystal clear you can do so if you like yeah and so to me that's huge right uh rather than going through uh filter press all the water's getting filtered you gotta shut the shop down open up the plates pressure wash them when it's time to clean these filters it's this ball valve take these two out go clean them but then these these two are working and so and it, have... it, our customers who are using these now love them um so one of the other questions eddie that came in while it was while it was through was uh the abrasive uh garnet um can it be filtered uh, or, you know, is it biodegradable and the possible recovery um, of the wastewater? So I, I think, uh, and correct me if I'm wrong, but we're, you're recycling 100% of the water inside of the shop, whether it's coming from your CNC's, your saw jets, uh, all of it. The abrasive garnet that's in the water, it gets into the trenches, it goes down through the system you know, is just like any other uh, sediment uh, that's coming into that system and it's getting pulled out and filtered just like uh, the stone dust is as well, right? Actually, it is more ab abrasive, of course, because it's, it's crushed oh, yeah. garnet. Uh, it comes out easier than the stone dust. That, look at if your shops were 100% garnet, it would be easier and you would have cleaner water through the course because the garnet comes out when you look at like again that big gray dumbbell system that thing is designed to put on a water jet table and simply remove and it removes 99.9 .9 percent of the garnet that you put in so when you put in those 80 pound bags of garnet we take out an 80 pound bag otherwise you start filling the bottom of the machine now that's a whole different story with so what gets collected yeah it's in a different story for the stone that industry. is a different story but to right. answer the question anything that gets into those trenches that garnet comes out with the sludge no problem yep okay so um you got to clean the filters right and yep. so and one of the one of the things it, another thing that i loved about this is you know i could take those filters over to this automatic filter cleaning station and just put it in there and it literally just sits inside of this. And, and you know, we're lucky enough that uh, we, we had a, a customer of ours give us a, a great video that we're gonna play right after this and he's gonna show you exactly how it works. Um, but basically you, you take this dirty filter and you plug it in there and you can see the nozzles that are coming through that spraying water back up at that filter, automatically cleaning it. And then all that sludge is going into this sludge bag. So it's not going back into your water system. You're, you're, but, you're but, continuously taking it out. But it is using system water. So you're not taking that 10 gallons a minute that that cleaning station runs on and overflowing your system with it. It works off of gray water in the system. It's good enough for cleaning the filters. And uh, it's very, very efficient. You basically put the filter in and walk away. Yep. Yep. Really, really big shops uh, that we put this in. Uh, sometimes they'll put uh, filter cleaning stations around the shop strategically uh, near their routers near their saw jets um, and then they'll keep those filters up in that area and over in that area and it makes it really nice for your operators to clean their own filters 
that's that is one of the things that we kind of cut you know and there are several shops that i can vision that i've been through and it's literally you know you walk through these shops it's like you're in different little cities and you know you the way our system is set up you can put the the quad hurricane right next to the cnc and that becomes that operator's baby and i've seen some where the gray water areas are in one area of the shop you walk through a couple of corridors and like Smoky Mountaintops, it's like two different freaking countries you're in. You go and basically you're set up. So they've got a cleaning station on each end. So they've got four or five CNCs by one, I think, or three by one and then two by the other. And you don't have to travel through the shop to have the things clean. And it's right there, point of use, ready to go. Yeah, it's fantastic. So, um, you know, you, you want to move forward with the system. Um, you know, one of the things that, uh, that, that we do as Baca is you're purchasing a machine, uh, Robo Sajet or a router or mitering machine is, uh, we will help you lay out that, uh, that piece of equipment inside of your facility. Um, as a customer that was putting in a, uh, complete new shop, uh, you can see we put in the Robo Sajet, a couple routers, there's a line polisher in there. And then, you know, we go to, uh, EBCO and, you know, they really help us with, uh, with all things water, right? And so you guys as well will do some uh, drawings for the customer also, correct? Yes, once we get the order, once we get it rolling, and you'll notice, you know, you could put that on a postage stamp in the corner over there. We spread it all out in the uh, big diagram so you can see it, but we kind of tuck everything in. And, you know, we know that, you know, real estate is important to you. Some of our competition, you pull out three of their damn tanks, you could put in two more CNCs. That's ridiculous. We try to keep <laughs> things nice and tight. We will give you full blown blueprints with the proper placement of the flume, the pit, the proper size of the water lines and where to place them, where the drops go down to the GPM, if a saw takes 10 gallons a minute, our system provides a 10 gallon a minute flow controller. We will not even allow you to overflow it. That's how- Yeah, that's you huge. Know. You know, so your, your router clear, is gonna get a 20 gallon a minute. Yeah, to be clear, so we know, you know, what this customer, uh, this customer purchased a uh, 120 gallon a minute system uh, providing uh, 80 gallons a minute of clear water is what this system is designed for. So 120 gallons a minute, gray water, and then we're taking 80 of those and turning that into clear water. Now that customer is probably gonna have less than five micron gray water. It's gonna be phenomenal because we're polishing it. I don't wanna, that's kind of a crazy saying we've had, but the solution for pollution is dilution. The more you filter, the cleaner your water gets. And that's a fact. So um, with, the, with the quotes, if you're looking to move forward, uh, you know, obviously it ships out of Michigan. Um, and then we also have installation that is included in this, uh, in the pricing as well. And so everything comes on one truck, uh, right? And then your team comes in and does the installation right behind it. Yep, we just did one uh, yesterday. Absolutely. Um, so, you know, with that being said, uh, you know, always uh, and in all of our virtual fabrication seminars, I like to explain to everybody that, uh, you know, we'd love to see you fly to Detroit, um, come and come and see, uh, you know, the Robo Sawjet or our CNC routers, our mitering machines, um, our, our CNC saws. Uh, and then and then we have customers as well that are using this Baca Pure in Detroit. We can show you that. Or we can take you over to uh, to EBCO and let you see their facility in, in more detail as well. So love to have you come in and, and fly to Detroit. And uh, and finally, um, you know, before we really start the Q&A, uh, as I mentioned, we were very lucky to have one of our uh, customers who's had the system now for two years. Uh, his, name is, his name is James Yost. He's with Inland Counters. Um, took some time and... Uh, gave us a really nice video about how his water system runs and so we can take that and uh and start playing that video and uh hope you watch i think it's an incredible video from a customer's perspective on how their water system runs after two years uh, 
Hi, this is James Jost from Inland Countertops, uh, owner of Inland Countertops, and this is Jesse. And we're here to talk about our water system, our Bakker Pier water system. Uh, this thing is awesome. It's absolutely incredible. Um, we were in the market for a water system, and we looked at the, the pancake type uh, systems, and I just wasn't really... Uh, I just didn't really like it. I didn't like the way that it worked and the way that you had to clean it. Um, kind of have downtime when it gets full. Um, this system here, when it the up here, this system here, when it gets full or the filters get uh, dirty, you just flip a lever. So there's no downtime on this system. It's running on two right now. Uh, Gauge tells us that light starts flashing. This gauge tells us that they're that they're uh, clogged or the filters are, are dirty. We literally flip this lever, and it runs on this side. So these are the filters that we use, kind of like a pool filter, but a little bit nicer one. Um, you literally pull these out, pull the old ones out, put these ones in, and you're good to go. Like the, the longest part of this process is taking these nuts off. You just take these nuts off. That's the longest part of the process. A uh, little bit of water we squirted in here to clean it. I actually plumbed these into our drain line that goes back to our tank because when we clean it, um, there's, there's a little bit of residual cake on the bottom and that goes back into our system. So we really, this is, we didn't clean this area. This is about what this area looks like all the time. Um, so the process of doing that is, is amazing. Uh, we have two of these quads, these are called quads. We have two of these. One here, which is doing our overhead lines to our drops, to our polishers. Uh, and then we have one on the other side of the shop down there that we'll show you um, that I just have hooked into a line polisher, a, a Marmo line polisher. If you want to upgrade this system, unlike the other systems, all you do is add one of these. And I can put this anywhere on the floor. It just has to be in through the water system. So. These gray pipes right here, a, a two inch gray pipe, the ones on the back side, are what this water system is doing. You can see it right here. Uh, so those are going into that. That's how it's cleaning it. The process of this thing working is it's always on. It doesn't work like the other systems where you, you turn on a machine, you turn on a machine and then water is being uh, going through the filter system and then you're cleaning the water you're using. This is always cleaning the water. So it, it's off right now just because of noise, but it's constantly cleaning the system. And, it, and it, this pipe set here goes all the way down the end of the building and comes all the way back. And then we have our all our machines drawing on every other side of the pipe as it goes down. That was kind of an idea I came up with to keep it balanced so it's not starving one area. But, it, but the way it works, it's not starving. So like the overhead halos that we have for the, for the uh, polishers, they draw on every other line also. So the reason why it cleans so well is because it's always running. It, it, it has cleaned the whole time. What were you saying? It has no downtime. Yeah, no, no, zero downtime it, 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 until we turn it off. Uh, literally, literally, I pull that handle and it's still going. So we'll kind of show you that. I think we'll turn it on. Go ahead and turn it on. So, this is our pit right here, and you can just keep filling the pit. This is our pit. I've never cleaned this pit. Two years, I've never looked inside that pit. Um, there's a sweeper system in here. It's right here, and it's like a jacuzzi. So this whole thing is plumbed with PVC uh, spray nozzles that just make this like a jacuzzi the whole time. So never have we jumped in this pit and cleaned it since I built this building. So we've only been here two years. We introduced this right away. Um, the lobster pots that we have here, which are awesome. You want to pull one of those up. So any trash that's in our system goes into this lobster pot. Then we just clean those out maybe once every week and a half or so. Um, not that much. So that goes there. Actually, can you lift this up so you can see it? So see, it's just a hole. I've never seen the bottom of that thing. Um, go ahead, see that thing back. And then here on the on the bag, so it's a bag system. Uh, it gets this water to 10 microns without a filter. This technically is a filter, but it'll get this our, our water to 10 microns that we can use on all our machines except the water jet and the polishers we want to use better. So that's why we're going to the quads. 
and that will make that water uh, 0.75 micron. Just, just about crystal clear water, and we'll show you that in a minute. So, this is not going. Okay, yeah. yeah, noise. So, we didn't want to turn it on because of noise. So, it, it goes through here. So, what happens here? It goes through this foam bottom tank, which is a, a, a pointing tank at the bottom, it goes in here, purges in here about every 10 minutes. So this is the heaviest cake. And then this drains back into the pit. This tank sucks up the water and goes through the cyclone system right here, which is cleaning it to 10 microns. So this is what's cleaning it to 10 microns. The heavy stuff won't go uphill, it keeps falling down. And then this goes back in the tank. Actually, this goes back into here. Three separate systems here of filter bags. One bag, three compartments. And then this goes back into that tank here. So that's how this works. How often do we change these bags? Once a month, you know, it depends on how much you cut, um, how you change your bags. But literally, you just pull these up. We don't even move anything. You pull these up with a forklift. We move this one out of the way to get to that one. But you take these up with a forklift. You let them dry outside, and then you throw them away. We kind of tie a knot in them or, or whatnot, depending on how full they are. But with like an old, another type of system, pancakes, you have to clean that out, put it in a wheelbarrow, then get it in a bag, and let it dry and do that. This is just literally 10 minutes and you, you change these bags. The process of cleaning those filters that we showed you over there, and this is this is a dirty one right here. Um, the process of cleaning those is they go into this system right here. The only thing I wish, I'm gonna take this door off. The only thing I wish is this had a better door on it. We don't like this door. It's an easy fix and I'm sure that they're gonna fix it over there at Depco. But this comes out and that's how that's cleaning. So that, that, just doing that, I'm gonna turn that off or slow it down. I'll slow it down just because it's kind of going everywhere. So this is cleaning a filter, dropping in here and going into a bag and going through the system again. So we're not cleaning this, this cake here is not going on the ground, it's going into a bag. Um, and it just keeps going. These are literally just sitting here spinning, kind of like on a, on a rotisserie thing. Uh, and then, you know, a man puts it in there, a person puts it in there and walks away from it. Probably about 10 minutes maybe. So that they'll do them, they'll keep them on the side and they'll bring them over to the, to the, uh, to the quads where they go. Um, to, uh, let me turn this one To the quads where they go. The water that this will make, one of these quads over here, I want to show you guys this. So this is water from the halo. So this is the water that will come out. So this is coming out of those quads over there. This is literally not a garden hose. This is going, go ahead, go up there, going up into our system. What is it, Arthur? I mean, it's going down. That's pretty good with that water. So that's what it'll make. It's pretty crystal clear. Pretty crystal clear. Yeah. So. Our water jet, our polishers, uh, we use it on our line polishers, so it's better. Um, but it's just, you know, like I said, clear. Pretty crazy. Um, yeah. So this, this is, I know I talked about the, the, the sweeping of the bottom tank. This is a giant, kind of like a power that's keeping it going too. So it's never settling here. It's only settling here. There's two line polishers. Um, we are now getting a new Revolution Baca. Um, so we're excited about that, getting rid of the bridge off. Um, what else do we want to talk about? We actually, so we were, before this system, we didn't have a system. We were using a pit and we were just cleaning that. So we were completely like super bad. Uh, and I think our water system was actually at 600 microns. So I did not come from a different water system than this. This is the first one that we came with. Um, and we're, we're just unbelievably happy with it. Over here is a tank that is, uh, Junior, what's inside this tank? This, I think it's an anticoagulator. It's a coagulant. 
so yeah so this here it is right here this is what makes the dirt separate right yeah. yeah so this goes in here all automatic we do nothing so this little thing's moving right now this whole system runs itself there's a few lights and gauges that you just got to make sure are working but it tells you as soon as it if something's not right that green light goes to red um, if something's slowing up like uh, one of the systems it'll go to yellow first then go to green so it gives you time it's not it doesn't just shut off um, and, and that's mostly that system over there so it'll tell us when, you know, when they need to be so also a, a big question is how much water pressure does it have uh, we got a lot we actually have it neck down they want to running at about 80 we're running at 75 but i, I want to say it's up crazy like 100 and something when we first got it but this is this is a hose on our hand polisher so this is not even it's a half inch line this is not even a two inch line so this is typical of what we have for pressure that's a lot of pressure out of a half inch line so you will if you have a water problem a pressure problem we had a pressure problem when we moved here uh, we're in a new area in the shop. There's not a lot of uh, other buildings around it. So we had, a, we had, we were thinking about getting a booster. But once we got the system, it is a booster. So it has a very large motor that makes that water pressure the entire day. So that's another thing that we're super happy about. Lots of water pressure. All right. So, yeah, that's uh, obviously James uh, has had that system now for a couple of years. Um, by the way, there's there's way more than just chains that are going to say the same exact thing about that water system. We've really had a lot of success and got to thank Eddie uh, as well for um, for your time. I appreciate you you joining with us um, to recap. Well, we, appreciate, we appreciate the opportunity. We're with the best and uh, it shows. So. Thank you, Eddie. So I am going to I'm going to bring this all back around. I want to recap. Real quick, we start with a gray water system that is 80 gallons a minute that can be upgraded to a clear water system uh, that can get all the way up to 80 gallons of clear water. Uh, we can add the pit sweeper to it, or we can design a shop that goes all the way up to 320 gallons a minute. We have a customer today that is using his machine with three double table saw jets and six routers, multiple line polishers, and has switched over from a filter pressed style system to ours and absolutely loves it. So from the small shop, Gray Water, to the biggest shops in the country, uh, EBCO and, and Baca are here to provide you a pure water system. So thank you very much. Thanks again, Eddie. Thank we you. We appreciate, appreciate it. appreciate the opportunity.